I am Travis Lee. I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships and Product Marketing at TNS, and I am glad to be able to have this time to talk with you today about items that we have seen in the payments ecosystem that are driving trends that merchants are facing in the marketplace. To start off, I want to talk about four key areas that we have seen both from our conversations that we've had with merchants directly as well as the strategic research and, and preparation that we've done for planning out our roadmap. The first key area that we see that is being faced by merchants is that in the industry right now, there's more in play than there's ever been before. Uh, if you've been part of the payments industry, you are very, well, very aware of the fact that the past five years saw a pace of change that accelerated well beyond what we saw in previous decades. That caused merchants to have to make the decision of whether they were going to stay on top of that accelerated change, both for how they interface with their customers and their back-end systems, or how they were going to work to keep a, on top of that pace of change by working with others to make that take place. The second trend that we want to talk about is that there is a shift or a sea change at the point of sale. That sea change is causing a shift from that traditional point of sales to a point of interaction with the customer. A lot of this being driven by the introduction of mobile devices that consumers are utilizing, as well as mobile devices that in-store associates can utilize. The third trend we'll talk about is that of data and the importance of utilizing big data to drive how you are interacting with your customers. Yesterday, card data was what we focused our analysis on and focused our decision-making processes on. Tomorrow's environment is going to be tied around that personal device and how it ties into the merchant relationship and how you can utilize that personal device or that smartphone to be able to interact with your customers. The last trend we'll talk about is that, that greater infrastructure needs are required to be able to support this acceleration of change, the point of interaction and the introduction or the inclusion of big data to drive decisions. All of this then is brought into the fact that risk with having this information in your environment has increased and merchants are questioning where they fit in the management of that data in their environments and how they can work to reduce their overall risk position by moving secure cardholder information, personal information outside of their environment. The first that we'd like to talk about is that there is dramatic change taking place in the marketplace right now. If you look back at the past 30 years, it was a limited process of change. The past five years with e-commerce activities heightening, with mobile devices heightening, that's, there's been a dramatic shift in the marketplace in the past five years, and that is continuing to fuel change that is going to go forward in the next five years. What we can say, because it's difficult to look at exactly what's going to happen in the next five years, what we can say for 2014 is that we are seeing the channels of commerce blurring together. No longer is it just an e-commerce channel, a mobile channel, and a traditional card presence or brick and mortar channel. We're seeing those channels come, come together into one channel, uh, being referred to in the industry now as omni-channel. And that convergence of these omni-channels are bringing into place a expectation from consumers that they want to be able to interact, purchase, and communicate with merchants whenever they want, however they want, and wherever they want, based on different devices, different means of being able to purchase, return, provide feedback. All this is blurring together into one channel that merchants are faced with the difficulty of figuring out how they can handle all these different channels of payments or channels of commerce into one succinct experience for their consumers, requiring them to be very customer focused in how they are providing solutions to their customers. If you were at the NRF event earlier in January, it was obvious at that event that vendors and merchants alike were talking about 
the convergence of these channels together into one omni-channel. As they discussed the importance of platforms, the importance of features and functionality and security, it was all coming back into how these channels of e-commerce, mobile commerce, and traditional brick and mortar were merging into one large channel. The next trend that we're seeing along this acceleration of payment activity is that security is paramount. And this actually could be the most important one that we're seeing in the industry right now, that your payment systems need to be locked down. They need to be cleansed of cardholder data. As merchants, you take upon the responsibility of securely managing that information that you bring into your environment if you accept electronic forms of payment. By storing, by transporting, by processing cardholder information in your environment, you have a large liability if you ever are breached. And as we talk with merchants, they are looking to push that as far as they can outside of their environment so that they can reduce their overall security posture, reduce the overall risk that they have by moving cardholder information and personal information outside of their environment. Previously, in the past years, merchants were focused on how they maintain their level of compliance with the PCI DSS standard, but now they're focusing more on how they can improve and limit their overall risk. This is accentuated by or uh, clarified by a report that came out from the FBI earlier in January that stated that of the breaches that have taken place recently that have involved RAM scraping malware technology, they believe that there will be a continuance of these types of malware crime over the coming near term. Encouraging merchants to take seriously the importance of securing the information that they bring into their environments and advising it, if at all possible, to be able to remove that outside of your environment. The next item in the acceleration of change is that mobile is happening. Uh, it is obvious that mobile is taking a change in the marketplace. It's critical to how we interact with consumers. It's critical to how you maintain loyalty and how you drive behavioral change with that customer. Also, not only in how you interact with your customer, but it's how you enable your associates on the floor to be able to be more intelligent and more equipped in answering questions that customers have as they are on your store floors or as they are interacting with you. This mobile phenomenon is causing us to look at how we change our strategy and how we interact with customers. Just last week, Nielsen Reports came out with a study on how consumers today are more connected than they've ever been before, and their access to these always connected mobile devices are changing how they interact with, with merchants. Uh, they point to the fact that digital consumers are more socially savvy than they've ever been, and they're more connected through these devices to their friends, to their family, and to their favorite brands than they've ever been before. This is causing us to have to look at how we communicate with, how we maintain relationships with customers. The next is that there's a prol proliferation of tender types uh, that are being offered for consumers to consume or to make purchases. Most of these have taken place in the e-commerce online environment, but we're starting to see them move into the traditional brick and mortar environment and definitely are available within the mobile commerce environment. In the past, it was all about cash, checks, a handful of credit cards, but now these alternatives are causing merchants to look at what type of tender types they accept from the purpose of the ability to increase their share of the con consumer wallet, as well as the potential of being able to drive down their overall acceptance costs of purchasing. As you look at the coming years, a study recently came out by WorldPay on their Global Guide to Alternative Payments. They project that within three years, online payments will be, the majority of them will be done by alternative payment types. This then gives the merchant the need to look at, from a business case perspective, which of these tender types they accept. 
if they know that they, by accepting a new tender type, they can increase how much a consumer spends with them, or if they can decrease the acceptance cost of payments, then it is well within their uh, strategy to look to bring on these new tender types. That then brings in the question of how they can continually keep on top of maintaining their back-end systems to accept new payment types. As the back-end platforms need to be flexible and need to be able to have ongoing continual roadmap addition of the strategic payment types that are out there in the marketplace. These changes, these trends of new tender types, mobile uh, coming in the marketplace, security becoming very important to merchants as well as channels blurring together lead us to the fact that there is a sea change taking place at the point of sale. The traditional point of sale was focused on being able to accept payments. Now we're seeing merchants moving to and consumers expecting a point of interaction that they can better interact with their merchants, not necessarily just for payments, but also for being able to receive information about products, being able to do lookups about products in store or products online, being able to do competitive comparisons of products. All of this is tying into a, a new point of interaction that merchants are looking to embrace this mobile, mobile phenomenon and utilize the mobile device as a means by which they can increase their relationship with customers. Traditional POS environments are still there, but we're seeing them migrate into more tablet-oriented and smartphone-oriented uh, payment environments where consumers can pay with a smartphone, where merchants can accept payments through a tablet, or accept payments at the traditional POS from a smartphone. All of this is changing how that interaction is taking place for the payments process. To step back just for a second, I'd like to get a little bit of input from you to understand where you are looking at your mobile strategy right now and have you deployed a mobile payment application yet. So if you could, we'll point, put up a poll here in our webinar for you to respond to. Just take a couple seconds to respond to this poll and let us know what your strategy is at this point. All right, I think we've got everyone's responses in now. And we'll gather this information, and in just a little bit, we'll talk about the results of the poll we just went through. And as we talk about what we're seeing is from merchants in the marketplace moving towards a mobile strategy. The next change that we're seeing tied back to this mobile strategy is that from a recent survey by the Carlisle and Gallagher Consulting Group, it was found that more than one-third of shoppers accessed their mobile devices while they were on the store floor. And they access those to review products, to look at competitive pricing for a product that they were looking at it, uh, on the store floor, to be able to do price mass matches with an associate, to be able to show that another store was providing a, a lower price and if they would be matched uh, by the store that they were at and to check overall stock and availability of, of, of products within the store. This is causing merchants to have to look at how they are going to embrace the introduction of, of mobile devices into the marketplace. They're here, uh, customers are expecting to be able to utilize them, and merchants are needing to have a strategy in place on how they can embrace this. What we found from a survey that came out by the RSI News Group was that of merchants surveyed, 20, about a quarter of them uh, did not have any firm plans in place for a mobile strategy in, in 2013. But three quarters either had a strategy that was being deployed and piloted that they were going to test here in 2014 or that they were preparing to start testing by the end of 2013, showing that the majority of merchants are seriously looking at how they're going to, bring, going to bring in mobile devices, both from a associate's engagement as well as from a consumer utilization. Of those three quarters of merchants that are involved in a mobile payment strategy, we're finding that 
two-thirds of them already are in phase of field testing, and one-third of them uh, were in the process of deploying. From the poll that we ran, uh, we received back that, yes, there were the top three responses were that uh, top response was that there were no plans uh, to have a mobile strategy. The second response was that they uh, have introduced a mobile strategy in 2013. And then the third, top, the third response was that of uh, the people currently on the webinar do not have a plan, but they're looking to do something here in 2014. In line with what we're seeing here, that uh, most merchants are looking at deploying in 2014 or are already in process from 2013 of deploying and testing a mobile strategy. Of those that were surveyed in this RSI News survey, that it was interesting to see that the key functions, the highest priorities they were looking for in rolling out a mobile strategy were not tied to payment acceptance, but they were more so tied to interaction with the consumer within their store and outside of their store, and how they can provide information to their associates to be able to help them be more intelligent and more equipped with helping their consumers, improving that customer experience. Inventory lookup, loyalty programs, accessing the store websites were all top items. Saving the sell or that endless aisle concept of being able to make the purchase in the aisle was 33% of the respondents. So key to most of these that came back in the survey response was that they were looking to enable the associate less so than utilizing it to be able to make, uh, receive payments. Although receiving payment was definitely one of the items that they did look at. Another item that came out in the survey is that of those that were planning to add mobile POS, what was their key focus for this? And again, it goes back to refreshing that store experience, improving the Salesforce support, improving that overall experience that they have with their customers within their store environments. And the last item that came out on this that was very pointing was that of all those surveyed, security was the highest concern that they had. Device security, PCI compliance, overall enterprise security were the key items that they brought out that as they are bringing on a mobile strategy, these were the items that were providing them the most heartburn. They understand that as they bring in mobile, both from a consumer acceptance perspective, as well as the ability to um, enable their associates, is that this gives another channel of breach into their environment, so security is one of the highest concerns they had. The third trend that we're seeing is that it's, it's about data. Um, we are now into the age of big data where channels of information are coming from these always connected devices, where mobile devices are providing information. Social media is being utilized to share information about merchant experience and merchant sentiment. Sensors or iBeacons are being utilized to track personnel within stores and geolocation are being able to track people outside of stores. All of this is bringing in a confluence of information from many channels that go well beyond the credit card data that was used in the past to be able to look at how merchants can better interact with their customers, how they can better drive behavior as they advertise to those consumers, as they provide them incentives and coupons, as they use this information for customer analytics, and to be able to overall shape the behavior of their interaction with customers. This all, all this big data is then tied back into the fact that there's an increased importance for risk management and an increased importance for security. This data then is driving in how the, the merchant can better manage their relationship with the customer but being able to do so in a secure way. The last trend that we've seen from talking with merchants is that all of these changes are causing them to look at where their focus is. Are they payments experts, and are they wanting to put forth effort in building these back-end platforms that are changing rapidly as new tender types are being added and new channels are being brought into it? Or are they retail experts and want to focus their efforts on how they manage the relationship with the customer and focusing their personnel and their resources on that consumer interaction. And then looking to outsource with those that are focused on the payment platform the ability to be more flexible, provide more functionality, provide a ongoing roadmap of platform capabilities that are staying on top of all the changes that are accelerating in the marketplace. 
and that provide increased security to them as they look to decrease their overall cost of operations and cost of capital on the back end. Three key areas that we saw for merchants that they were looking at in relation to infrastructure is that they wanted to ensure that they stayed focused on their customers, stayed focused on driving revenue as a bottom line for them. And by ensuring focus, they then can maintain their personnel's foc um, priorities on projects that were customer facing. So they could work with others to avoid complexity, reduce cost, and move liability out of their environment, and then work with payment experts that provide flexible platforms that are continually being worked on and uh, added to in a long-term roadmap. To conclude our webinar today, I, five key points that I want to make sure that are brought out, and that is that the traditional payments landscape is under pressure. There's an acceleration of change, and what we've seen in the past is continuing to change. That advancement and that acceleration of change is causing merchants to look at where they need to be focused and what they will put their resources towards. Security and risk management is a roadmap driver. It is a mandate for anyone that is accepting payments, payments now. And working to be able to be customer focused as you partner and outsource to payments experts that have flexible platforms will allow you to stay on top of that ever-changing customer environment so that you can maintain your personnel focused on the customer. And the last is that there are many payment providers out there right now that provide managed cloud-based payment services that are flexible, that can remove cardholder information outside of your environment, and still allow you to maintain control of the payment experience as you interface into their environments. That concludes the prepared marks we have for today. We have several questions that have come in that we'd like to use now to, with the remaining time that we have today. First question that came in that we'd like to respond to is, do you think the data breaches that have been talked about in the media are overinflated, or do they really pose a significant issue? And without a question, yeah, these are a significant issue to merchants. Uh, they present both a real as well as a perceived impact to merchants. Uh, th that real impact is one that consumers who have been impacted by the breaches and their cardholder information has been stolen um, have a, a tainted uh, perception of the relationship with the merchant. Uh, and the merchants are feeling the tangible impact of the cost that is going to remediating these breaches. Uh, just the estimate that came out uh, from the target breach is that it will cost them well over a billion dollars to, re to respond to this. And there are industry surveys or industry research that have come out stating that each card account that has been breached is costing over $200 to uh, remediate the, the impact of that. So definitely these, uh, the media has latched on to this, but it is, it is not overinflated. It is a definitely a concern that merchants need to be looking at. The second question that uh, we came in was, um, should merchants upgrade their systems now to accommodate changing consumer behavior? Or is it OK to wait and combine all this with their EMV migration plans? And I would uh, respond to that that you should be actively looking now as a merchant to uh, be putting into place your EMV migration plans now and while you are looking at EMV for that October 2015 liability shift date that you should, while the hood is up on your internal uh, store environments as well as your back-end environments, that you, you should be looking at ways that you can make uh, other changes with your environment and work towards being able to remove cardholder data from your environment and be able to partner with others to maintain that back-end platform environment. Um, last question that we'll have time for then is uh, we want to improve the shopping experience for our customers, but incorporating all the things we've talked about today uh, are going to be costly and time consuming. So what two things would you recommend we should do if nothing else? I, I would recommend that security is the most important of the things that we've talked about today. You could uh, make changes and in investments in other areas, but a data breach would quickly overshadow 
any changes that you make anywhere else. Uh, secondarily, I would encourage you to focus in on mobile strategies of how you're going to utilize mobile devices, both to equip your in-store associates as well as to be able to interact with your customers and accept payments from your customers to improve that relationship that you have with the consumers. Uh, those would be the two key things that I would uh, recommend that you, you look at today as security is uh, overwhelming the industry and mobile is definitely uh, here to stay and is, will allow you to improve that relationship with your customers. We did have other questions come in. We'll follow up individually with those that uh, presented questions. And we will be making this presentation available uh, for, in a recording. If you have questions that you would like to send into TNS to talk about what we discussed today or to be able to learn more about how we can help you as a managed service provider that provides a flexible back-end platform that can bring omni-commerce together with e-commerce, mobile, and car present transactions all managed through a SaaS-based offering, please email me or give me a call and we'll definitely be able to help you out. I appreciate everyone's time today in taking 30 minutes from your day to learn about these key trends that we've seen in the marketplace, and we look forward to talking with you more in the future. Thanks, and have a great day.